we'll take a look at uh, GCOA number three. This is an early objective, again, setting uh, foundational concepts and ideas for later. And really, this is all about symmetry. Uh, the actual objective says, given a rectangle, parallelogram, trapezoid, or a regular polygon, describe the rotations and reflections that carry it on to itself. Now, it doesn't actually say symmetry, but really that's what we're talking about here. We want students to be able to identify and describe the symmetries of the shape. Uh, we want to talk about the maximum symmetries possible. We want to get into the specifics of order and the angle of rotational symmetry, and just also to focus on the parallelograms. I, I will say this, I, I missed the boat the first time I did this. I thought this was a very low level uh, concept that I could kind of hit it and roll and, and not worry about it. I later found out that looking at these parallelograms, when I say parallelograms, I'm talking about the rectangle, the square, the rhombus, and the parallelogram. Looking at them up close in symmetry is huge, absolutely huge for later. So the big idea here is what are the symmetries, line and rotational. Great entry into transformational geometry, something that they should already know. Connects us from the past, things that they know about symmetry to now. Pits and traps. Uh, there are a couple of those. Uh, a classic one. A lot of students think that a rectangle has uh, diagonal symmetries, just like a square does. But if, if that was to be reflected, it would form a shape like this. Uh, and so a, a rectangle does not have dia the, the diagonal symmetry uh, or the line symmetry on the diagonal. A square does, but a rectangle doesn't. Another big issue <clears throat> is that if a shape let's say this one here, was to be rotated. <clears throat> and you rotated it all the way 360 degrees to get it back to its original place. And there were no rotational symmetries in that time. It says that it has an order of one. In other words, its rotational angle is 360. Most students want to call that zero, but it has a rotational value of one. Uh, the last thing maybe to mention is this idea of maximum symmetries, uh, important idea found in the regular polygons. Uh, what are my reflections? I miss shot this one big time. I thought it was a light, uh, low level uh, kind of a concept. Preparing the um, symmetries in the quadrilaterals makes a huge difference when we want to prove things. Think about what it means if you have symmetry. It means that angles map to angles and sides map to sides. That's going to help us when we want to talk about why the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Well, if you rotate it 300 or 180 degrees because it has an order of two rotational symmetry, it maps onto itself. Opposite sides are equal, must be in that shape.